Hello and welcome to See Through, presented by Hermans. Today we are joined by Carl Hickey, who is an artist from Dublin. Carl, thank you very much for being here. Not about it. How are you? Good, yeah. Yeah. Good day. Let's Chilling. start you off nice and easy and ask you an easy question. Tell mm. me a bit about yourself. Uh, so my name is Carl Hickey. I'm an artist from Clondalkin. I've been painting the past five years, I think. Got into a after school, went straight into a PLC in Ballyfermie. Then went to NCAD and graduated last year. And since that, I've been in the DNR studios at a residency. And now we're here. Nice. A year later, so we're still there, still ticking away. Excellent. When was it that you, like, do you have a time where you're like, became interested in art? Has it always been something that's there, that's been there? Uh, well, but yeah, I think, I think even when I was a kid, I always wanted to do something creative. Like, even just when I was listening to rap music when I was a teenager and all, I was always mad into the storytelling aspects of it, the, great, the, the creativity behind that. Like, and that was before I ever even painted, like, in, or done art because I didn't do it in school. So, there was always and there was always things that I always done that were more creative. And then I was doing skiing, which is more creative as well, which is a creative sport rather than just straightforward. Uh, so, yeah, I think I was always, like, wanted to do something creative and then... Yeah, I ended up doing a PLC because I was doing um, graffiti and a few of my mates had made that transition between graffiti into like art in college and stuff. So I just done it for the laugh. I thought I was just going to get stoned for a year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> smoked a joint on the first day with me, mate. You remember this is uh, 16th of September and I went back in at my lunch and I was just like, oh, I'm not going to smoke weed again. This in, in the college, I was like, this isn't good. <laughs> So I did, uh, and then I, I just ended up liking it. I just uh, kept my head down. I used to always listen to music. And uh, when I was in the class, like, walking away, then I just started liking it a bit more. And then I was just like, oh, can I actually give this a shot? Then I went into Plyde for NCAD or whatever I got in. And then I wanted to do sculpture for for a year when I got into NCAD. And about halfway through, it was um, one of my tutors made me change my mind. But I only wanted to do sculpture because I was doing uh, woodwork and skill so and then that just translated into that, yeah. So when you were in doing your PLC, were you doing painting? Were you doing a mixture? Uh, it was a module, it was everything. So I was doing life drawing and there was communications as well, sculpture, painting, just normal drawing as well. There was like 10 modules or something, photography as well, a few other things there. And at the time, did painting jump out at you then or...? No, not all. Not all, like, um, but I would see I was destined, like, when I went in, the one of the tutors had said to me, oh, you're good with your hands, did, did you do woodwork? Because she knew that I didn't do our work, and I was like, yeah, so she was like, oh, you could be a sculptor, so I stuck to that. Do you know what I mean? I was yeah. like, oh, sculptor, yeah, that works for me, like, and I did, like, I, I enjoyed it, like, and then when, then when I went into first year, one of the tutors, I'd seen some that I made, and you just like you. You shouldn't be a sculptor. You should be a, a painter. And I was just like, ah, oh, it's in first year. It's easier, and like, because like you can make sculptures and stuff. But it was like uh, more accessible to paint as well. So it was just like, hey, I'll just mm-hmm. it's a choice to get painting. And then ever since, I didn't really look back. Like I want to come back to sculpture at some time in the future, maybe in the next vision or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, for now, just paint. Yeah. So if you were first kind of doing sculpture and things like that, how would you say your style has evolved since you very first started painting to now? I, well, you see, when, with sculpture, it's mad uh, conceptual, yeah. yeah. It's very hard to be like, just like, oh, I just like this. So, well, you can do that as well, but I, th- I think when I was going into my PLC, I was definitely like, oh, art is like, oh, this has to represent this. Mm. Every object has to do this, you know what I mean? Like, you know, trying to make links happen. Uh, but probably trying too hard as well. Then with painting, once I started finding like what works for me, it was very just basic images mm. and, and like areas that I like around my area. Then that evolved to something. But now I'm kind of going back to that conceptual part of it where like notes and other stuff, not necessarily just the paint. I think the paintings are pretty much the same, like it's just relatively stuff that I like. Mm. And um, But the notes are adding to the paintings, like a backstory or okay. why I'm painting them things or mm. why I find mm. what I'm looking at interesting. Yeah. Like an awful lot of your work stems from obviously what you see around you mm. and what you record in your phone yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Um, is there, a, is there a, a piece or a 
something you saw or you recorded? Do you, do you remember that time you felt the urge to paint something that you saw? The first time. For the first time. I wouldn't be too sure, but I remember during my degree show, or like on my degree year, um, it was around Christmas and I recorded a bloke uh, going through the, like there's a gap in my estate when he got off the bus to to my house, yeah, and there's a, uh, there was just a bloke and he had a high vis on and he was just uh, cycling at home and he had a big bag on the side of it. But I recorded that and uh, I got COVID during Christmas. So I was like at home sick for like during Christmas day and I painted that um, on Christmas day. Like, so that was like the, the time was like, this works. Like, I don't know what it was. Cause the video, it was like, the video wasn't as good as what I was doing with the paintings. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it's the same as images as well. Like you can't necessarily, you can necessarily make like a painting can do a better understanding mm -hmm. of like atmosphere and mm. uh, what it feels like at the moment rather than an image or a video yeah. as well. So, but when they done that, I was like, this is, this works like, mm. but sometimes it, that, that was a very simple moment as well, but then there's also other cr like chaotic videos and stuff. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah I suppose when you're, when you're capturing something and then, you know, painting your interpretation of it, there is, you know, an element of sensitivity or like mm. kind of sense of humor you bring to it when you're painting it. So what's the kind of most important thing for you to, represent or get across when you're painting a scene like that? Uh, probably, I think probably colour is probably the best, like, because, mm. uh, but colour, like, it's very instinctive though, isn't it, with colour, because, like, if you overcomplicate it, it's, it goes out the window. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I just, I try to paint as fast as I can, like, as well, though, because I get really bored of, like, stuff as well. So, like, if I've not done it, like, and then I keep, like, messing at it, it's just done, like, and then I, I just have to move on to the next thing, but, but uh, yeah, definitely colour, because if you don't get the colour right, it just doesn't work, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people would use black and stuff in paintings as well. It's like, you can't use that. Um, it just deadens it. Like, yeah. but, uh, so like, obviously then you use a different colour, but yeah, definitely colour, I think. Then uh, co composition as well, if the composition is off, then it's out the window as well. Like you have to get the composition right. Mm. But that's instinctive as well. So yeah, composition and colour. So you have obviously works featured in our upcoming exhibition mm -hmm. um, on our auction. Uh, do you want to talk to me about them? Yeah, um, that's a piece that I made during was uh, during one of my shows um, for Italian Now is um, um, Melancholic, Melancholic uh, Perspective was called. But it's basically just a representation. The vid the, I had a video that was actually taken in Tala and um, show it to me mate Aaron Coyley. So he had taken this because up there they still have all their fields and all. And so they still rally the cars out in their fields. So he had taken that video and was like, I want to use this because I had wrote, r I'd written a piece about how they don't do that on our, like on our road. Like you used to have to like look out my window and see that on the, on the field. They don't do it on uh, there anymore because they do up the field to build new houses. But uh, I was like, there's something, because they know everything out for us, and then that video came, and I was like, there's something about that young friend looking at the car mm. that reminded me of myself, so that's what the painting is, basically. Yeah. Very good. Very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you mentioned you're in the Dean Art Studio now on a residency. Mm -hmm. When you were in the studio painting, is there something essential that you need to get in the flow? Yeah. Music, yeah. 100% music. Well, what's, on, like, on the, what's on the rotation? Oh Jesus! It's all out. it's actually it's proper boy power. Like it's all over the place. Like okay. it's, it'd be like jazz, and then it'd be trap music. Like it's it's mm. mad, but it's mostly jazz though. Like because mm. that's the one thing that if I'm listening to jazz and then trap comes on, I always change it, and then I always feel rap and stuff, and then like pop music as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah, it's art and like but uh, yeah yeah. If I don't have music on, it's weird. It's like like I can't even get the bus without music. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'll stay I'll stay in town to charge me phone to get the bus home so I have music. So, like, I'd be walking around with a tick and all without music. <laughs> she literally yeah. twitching my hands. Jittering. Yeah. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. In terms of, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be art events coming up, although I know you're involved in a, in a, in a, in a, in a good few. Uh, what events are you looking forward to coming up in Dublin at the moment? Up in Dublin at the moment? Um, not really, I'm not, I don't really know. I don't really go to events or anything like okay. that. Like I go to a few gigs or something. So you can give Come. a few, uh, you can give, give a few shameless plugs yeah, for, yeah. for for uh, for shows yeah, you have coming up. Mm, yeah, what well, for exhibitions coming yeah. up? Uh, well, I just as I said today, uh, we're in the art riddler competition. Your man rang me today, 
So that was good news to get. And then we're doing this exhibition in Trinity Exam Hall, which is like the first one of its kind, which is that, that space. Is, yeah, that was never done. That space, yeah, that space is it's mad. Like yeah. the, the the historical paintings and all that run down it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's weird. We used to get we used to get kicked out of when <laughs> we used to get kicked out of Trinity all the time when we skated years ago. We used to give the school to get stick. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's gas now. now being there, like I was in there this morning. And just mad getting the photos taken and all this is like fucking hell. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's gas, yeah. Right. Yeah, very good. Mm. Yeah. Do you find you get more inspiration now being in town every day or Well like, hell no, I was always in town every day. Like yeah. since since I was about twelve, we used to go around town every day. Like, uh, cause of skating, it used to years ago it used to be so like small. Like obviously now it's huge, but uh, years ago we used to go around. Cause I mean, have all our mates would be from all over the place, mm. which was rare at that age. You know what I mean? Mm. You usually stay where you're from. But uh, yeah, since we were twelve, we used to go around, cause some mad shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. but uh, but inspiration was yeah, it's good. That's mm. what you wrote when I was applying for them to the and stuff. Was just like the fact that I would be in town every day. With the studio there, it's like it's not. There's nothing really stop me from making work except myself if I don't do it. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, being around town obviously helps with inspiration. Yeah, nice. constantly. Yeah. So do you set up a little routine for yourself when you go in every day or no? You when I'm good, yeah, I have a routine. Like this week, I've been <laughs> on top of it. Yeah, I've been getting up at seven and getting in, getting work done. <clears throat> and sometimes, like, but it's like even if I get in at twelve, like I just feel like a bit like wet, like I'm at the waist in the day. Or yeah. something. So yeah. I try to get in as early as I can, but. Um, as I said, I paint quick, so we don't spend too long in the studio unless, unless I ha- unless I'm walking towards like a show and like I know I have to get stuff done and I, I need to put my head to it. But like it's kind of nice being able to like oh I can do what I want, but like I go mm. in and spend like three to four hours a day max. Otherwise, like I'll just be overdoing it. Do you know what I mean? I think that's the best part about it is like you can go out, then you can socialize as well, and I get most of my inspiration from just being around people as well. So. Part of the job, I suppose. Yeah, it's part. That's basically being in the studio, just being out with the lads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clogging yeah. around, talking to elves and all. <laughs> I'm working. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, other than say challenges of trying to like get yourself up at seven o'clock in the morning? What do you think are the kind of, as a whole, what do you think are the greatest kind of challenges facing artists at the moment in in, in Dublin, but in Ireland? Like, what do you think? I say, I say it's. It's just the fact that a lot of people don't continue after college. I think that's one of the best because, like, I know, I know so many people that were, like, in my year and they just didn't after. Like, they just, well, I get it. Like, it's hard to, to continue stuff, especially, like, if there's no support there for you. But it's just the fact that I think it's either, like, oh, like, they don't see a future in it or it's just there's not there's not enough things out there for them to do as well. Mm. But it is, it is hard to continue with, obviously, but that, I think that's the greatest challenge because if there was more people just sticking to it, like, maybe there'd be, there'd be more of a scene. But um, it seems like not that many people go on to continue art after art college, which is weird because mm. you're spending... Like, anyone in any other field, like, you go to college and then after you basically do what you want and then in the rare occasions you, you just didn't like it. So you go to college again and you do something else. But with art, it's, it is... It uh, seems like a lot of people just drop drop it after mm-hmm. you might do a few things but no yeah. nah, not, not in career wise it's not what they actually do yeah do you think there's a reason for that that's, uh, that's what I'm saying like I think it's because they maybe they don't see a future in it like it's and it's yeah. very hard like and it's like after your degree show or something but like and the momentum isn't there yeah. and you don't really have like obviously if you're in college like there's like oh you have to go to college you have to be in on time and all but then if the momentum isn't there. It's, it's I'd say it's very hard. Like if you don't get a residency, like if you don't get a studio, then you have to pay for a studio to rent, and then you have to make money off it somehow, which means you have to sell your work mm-hmm. constantly. So it is. A, yeah. They can see it being difficult, but I'd say if there, if it was easier for us to continue after college and not just go straight into work because yeah. obviously you don't have rent to pay or something, so you can have it. What What helped you keep your momentum going? Well, straight because I won the. The the Dean Arts Award, like I, I had a studio, mm. so when I because I I have a studio, I have a place to work. I can like live off the work, off the paintings realistically, but it's uh, I wish I was better at uh, spending like because it's spending money <laughs> too quick. But yeah. um yeah, but that's it. And then uh, but it's, if you put on work, you get the the rewards, I suppose. Yeah? Mm-hmm. But um obviously that is that's a really big factor though, because if like literally the, after. After the degree show, I was able to collect the keys to the studio like within a week. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's just, and then it's just like you can keep going from that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, definitely that. Do you think there's any, any people who supported you that you think, like that really helped you along that journey? Like, well, is it, is it college? Is it, the, is it the dean? Like, well, Mesa, Mesa, he would have been a, a very uh, big influence. And in I remember even the summer before I graduated, uh, he got me a voucher just to continue to get the good, like the great materials. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Then. Yeah, but then this following somewhere, that's when he asked me to do a show. So yeah, yeah, and that's a that's a great achievement. Anyways, it's one of my proudest moments just having a show in a gallery straight after college because yeah. it's just like you have your degree show and then to have that mm -hmm. win less of a year it was great. But you kind of do need people like that. I think you need yeah, it's hard to do what like completely on your own. But that's why it's like you should always like big up other artists as well, like John yeah. upcoming yeah. artists yeah. as well. Especially in Dublin, it's so it's small. You need the mm -hmm. community, like. Yeah, yeah. You think um, there is a strong community there in 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 art and Dublin? Yeah, I think it's. I think so. I think so. But like, it's people. People all have their own thing as well. Like, it's like you know what I mean. I know artists that I like mess like fuck with or whatever, and then, then I just kind of. But I also kind of stick to me mates. Like, I don't go to many gallery opens or whatever. You know, was that the other day? Like, but which I sure do. That's my own fault. Like, but um. So I think there is a good sense of it, but it, it, it does seem to be like the same people now. Because I've noticed that even the past two years, like it's like kind of the same people. Like, do you get me? Mm. So maybe there's a reason behind that why like more people aren't popping up. But yeah, in Ireland as well, like because I've I've chatted to people over Instagram, like from Limerick and stuff, and then I've then I've met them and all, and it's yeah. good to be able to. And yeah, and it's like someone was down and I fell in the grain, and it's like we had a laugh, like you know what yeah. I mean. But it's gas, like just that uh, you didn't know them and then you meet them down there and you're like, is it gas? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Pretty good. Do you want to do your. Uh, yeah, my phone questions. Quick for phone questions. Questions. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah quick. I, I had a look, but I don't know, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Very difficult one. Mm. First one, what's your favorite color? Uh, the it's purple, but it's like the darkest point of purple. Indigo. <laughs> so I don't know what the, what the <laughs> right name is, but it's it's uh, Prussian blue and uh, Vienna mm. and born born Sienna makes a stake. It makes the black in my mind. Okay. So yeah, it's, yeah. remember I was saying like I don't I don't like the color of black because yeah, it yeah. puts a hole into the paint. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's yeah. that color. Yeah. yeah. So whatever that is. What's that? <laughs> Whatever that yeah, colour yeah, is, I don't yeah, know what to look at now. Yeah, when it's purple, but when you think of purple, it's just like, it looks like pink. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, but it's not. <laughs> it's not pink. Yeah, it's not. My favourite colour is not pink. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fucking pink, boys. <laughs> uh, if you were to be on a desert island, mm -hmm. three things you'd bring with you. And we're giving you, obviously, because this is quite came up a lot, people asking the same question. We're giving you, like, food and. Like right, so it's just three items. It's not, it's not three, three luxuries. Three luxuries. Three luxuries. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, spend your time with. But yeah, right, so I'd got of like so if I pick one album I'd go, uh, go kid Mad C E. <laughs> oh no, I pick two albums and then and look one other thing. So I'd pick Good Kid Mad C E and then uh Frank Sinatra Simply Best. So that's a co uh, compilation album. Like it's not <laughs> before it's fucking like you, you wouldn't get sick of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So them two <laughs> albums and then I have one item left. Jesus, cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be fucking roasting on the way. Really great. Yeah, we're just about coconuts earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we we talked a bit about how a lot of your work stems from obviously observations you have, things mm -hmm. like that. Is there? Have you ever been on a trip that's really kind of shaped your your kind of vision or your art or influenced it in some way? Well, like I. I always said, yeah, I, go, oh, I could make work in like Ireland, Ireland, Dublin specifically for mm. the rest of my life. But I, I, like, I went to Limerick and it's like so close to Dublin. Mm. So that like kind of, yeah. Like oh, was, we went on a trip, like and uh, it was me and my mates, and we went down to film a memorial joyride. But <laughs> it, it was mad, yeah. Like they just like they blew everything I knew from Condock and out of war. Like yeah, they just yeah, they're on level. the next level down yeah, there. Yeah. They're all fucking nuts, like. So, but when I went to there, I was just like, oh shit, like this is class, like, you know what I mean? That's probably one of them because we went down to record and it was like a big project. It was more for me, mate, because mm -hmm. yeah, he's, uh, he's into film and stuff. But that was probably like, oh, you can do this everywhere. And now, well, well I've seen like loads of stuff. I want to travel more now, so mm -hmm. I, I want to walk somewhere else yeah. for like a few months. Well, when you have the eye 
for mm. noticing like well see that's what you I kind of need to be around somewhere like a little bit chaotic so yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm really trying to get out to New York because that shit just looks it looks like there's stuff happening there non-stop like people balancing tellies and all on their heads yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'd like, yeah. love to paint that so yeah, yeah trying to yeah. get out there but Limerick yeah because it was like it's close to like it feels like Dublin but it's not and I know there's obviously loads of other places like that mm. so it's not really stale so I'm yeah. there something like that in terms of the work you've created, mm-hmm. you have a work that stands out for you. Most your favorite work, most treasured, most treasured <laughs> piece you've ever produced. Um, it's pro- it would probably be that the bike paint I was talking about. Mm. Uh, either that one or the the center piece or the main piece from everything alone that was in uh, Italian now. The one with the kids uh, on the bin. Mm. So that one, because that, that was like a real, that was a full conceptual like moment that like, like the way that exhibition came together, like the notes were written all over the place. Mm. And then just like it so happened that it all worked together, which I never had before. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it was like probably, yeah, no, I go with the bin one. Yeah. Because it, like, it was, it was mm. a personal, such a personal piece. You know what I mean? yeah. So yeah, definitely that piece, yeah. And those kind of notes that you had to accompany the works, mm-hmm. like were they, they were stuff that you had kind of written down? Yeah, I'd written, after. Because I always write, I always uh, write notes, like I always write like little notes, or I used to like write raps, like, <laughs> but they're basically notes because when I was writing raps, like they'd be like, they would be notes more mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. So I mean, there wasn't like really like lies in them. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but then it, when it, obviously when I got into NCID, I'd say I'd write notes that like would relate to the work. And then that continued to like be more like it, the nose would become more, I don't know, like they'd kind of be more pieces than just like little notes. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, I don't, I think it was an exhibition, it was in Palace Studios, yeah, and I'd written a piece just and about people drinking on the bus after work. And then the same day, I'd seen someone on a, I don't know what that thing is, but it carries a pallet, it's not a um, forklift. Mm. But he was mm. sitting on it the opposite way and pushing it fo- backwards instead of pushing it forwards. So he's sitting on the old, pushing it backwards <laughs> like that. So I was reading a piece and then I was just like, damn, two coins on with mm. each other. So, yeah, and then uh, that's how we started doing them notes things, yeah. Yeah, very mm. good. In terms of if you had to spend a day with another artist, living or dead, mm. anywhere in the world, who would it be and why? Is this an Irish artist or any artist? And yours. Oh, I, yeah, 100% Edward Hopper, yeah. 100%, <laughs> yeah. I have to be him, just because okay, he's, uh, like, he'd be my favourite painter. Mm. Like, Jack B. Yates would be my favourite Irish painter, but Edward Hopper, without a doubt. Because mm. it just, it, it's, I think it's just mad. He used to just get his wife to do all the poses <laughs> for his paintings. <laughs> so, uh, mm. yeah, I'd just like to see how we came up with it. Because the way, I mean, he, he's just a weird character as mm. well. He's a... Uh, I read some of his notes that he wrote to some publisher and he's just like the damn publisher was just like asking him like how like what's this what's up with like these alienated figures and all and he's just like what's he basically saying what do you mean like yeah, yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. I'm just painting like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well obviously you look at it all together and you're just like this fella's fucking yeah, lonely yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, solitary figures yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so these yeah, people are yeah. sad in New York. Yeah <laughs> this will go over get a bit of sadness yeah. getting too humble over here <laughs> yeah well, yeah, well, I, I the guy's the next. My next question was going to be an artist that's influenced you most. Would Edward Hopper be your, your biggest kind of... Is this a painter? Yeah. Um, or, you know. Well, yeah, Edward Hopper in terms of paint, mm. I think. Um, but I'd, t- I'd say Kendrick Lamar probably overall, mm. just because that conceptual album had uh, great, like, OK, Matt Yes. Yeah. I remember, like, I was listening to it in school, but that was, like, before I painted or whatever. Mm. But like, I was listening to that, I was like, this is like yeah, unbelievable. No, is so yeah, but that level, continued yeah. on, like, do you know what I mean? Like, it didn't stop there with his work, so it would be his. And plus, he's like someone that grew up in like a, yeah. like an area, it wouldn't be similar to mine, it'd be fucking mad. <laughs> but it would, it's that good yeah. story, like made it out and stuff, but but like not leaving where you're from behind know, and like, stuff. It so. transcends it, like I was... 16 in Sligo and I had it on vinyl do you know yeah, like, yeah, like I was going we, to a convent we all like, downloaded. I could not relate to that yeah, like, that we, lifestyle we, 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 went, uh, we downloaded the Spotify uh, seven day trial when it yeah, came yeah. out yeah. all of us were like 2012 yeah we all downloaded it when we were skiing <laughs> yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just, uh, 11 years ago now so mm-hmm. but yeah it would be him he'd be a great influence for sure even the notes 
Um, yeah. The notes that was out, like if after that um, new album, Miss Morales came out, mm. uh, that was very like personal mm-hmm. and deep, but like being honest to yourself. Yeah. And like I just uh, when I was writing these notes, I was like writing a lot about my childhood and stuff, and like I felt like that gave me a kind of a push to do it as well, like because mm-hmm. it was it was just like lay everything on the line if you're an artist or whatever you're why not like and I felt like I was wor- was making work for a good few years, but nothing was actually like. Oh, this is me, like, do you know what I mean? I'm just painting what you see, but yeah, yeah. but now you're actually reading shit that we've been through, do you know what I mean? So it was uh, that kind of gave me the push to do that, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know you says you don't really go to new gallery opens or anything like that, but in terms of like as an artist, for the cultural space we have, and mm. for like artists and for art goers and art lovers, what do you think we need as a, in this in our cultural space? What's going to make it better? What's going to allow it to thrive? I, th- I think more central, co- it's more central uh, exhibitions like in like bang on in the middle of town, like do you know what I mean? They're all like kind of well, Temple Bar is there, do you know what I mean? But in terms of like like a space that like artists can rent mm. or not necessarily rent, but like is more accessible for artists, emerging artists, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not it's not like oh you have to. F- and you know, apply, do all this stuff yeah. like yeah. it's just like group shows every month or something, and there's an open cut. I know Hank Tuff had a space there, mm-hmm. but I mean, bang on the heart of like Grafton Street or something, something that yeah. make it like because do you see all that stuff around like other places? Like, you see that in London, you see that in, and don't get me wrong, it is nice traveling like like on the outskirts, yeah. uh, but like, uh, like imagine like see Italia now has that new space uh, that's open around the corner from the old one, like that's you, which that was bang on the middle of like. Mm-hmm. Dame Street or something like yeah, it really shine, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you'd have people that are out having drinks walk by, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And be like, oh, look at this. And, and like Dame Street would be where a lot of tourists come over, that'd be into, into art, do you know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. So imagine like that, a space like that would be great, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that that'd probably be the best as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, Dad, a few of the other artists were saying that there's no kind of middle ground. It's either like you're in a small gallery. Or else, you know, you have to do a lot of applications mm. and stuff to yeah, get into one of the big uh, institutions, you yeah, know, like the, the RHA or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the applications process is mad intimidating. I don't know. I feel that uh, I always just find, find it difficult to like apply for stuff mm. properly. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. even to, even that, you know that uh, lottery three fifty uh, weekly payment <laughs> yeah. that we're giving out to ours. Yeah, Remember yeah, we're the in, Arts uh, Council. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're in. Um, we were like in our last few days of uh, tours here, like in and going into the degree show and all, and everyone was like stressing getting it done and all. And I, I opened up and it just wouldn't let me do it. Like it just wouldn't let me. I kept trying to change the password. I was just like, "Fuck that!" Was, <laughs> like I make them money myself. I call it, I call it, they don't them. But yeah, I just always find they're just so intimidating. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because it's like an artist find it so hard to. I think when it comes to written stuff, you get it done. Like do you know what I mean? Don't like don't get me wrong, but. Like, it's just so intimidating. These oh, yeah. formal forms, you know what I mean? Exactly. And the yeah. word stuff, like, it's like fucking filling a form for the HSE. Yeah. Medical yeah, card. Yeah, but yeah. they make it so hard for you not to get it. Yeah. 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 Do you think, uh, is that something that you were helping in college at all? Was it like, ter- uh, patients or we, the business side of art? Like, were you, were you assisted a lot with that? Uh, not really for the, bu- well, for the business side of art. Yeah, probably, like, there was, like, lectures and um, seminars and stuff. But, like, this goes out one ear and out the yeah, other, do you yeah. know what I mean? You kind of need someone it's to sit there with you and click through with you, do you know what I mean? Of it, yeah. Because, like, it's, like, half the time, it's it's very hard to, like, like, in most artists, is like this, like, do you know what I mean? It's very hard to, like, it, like just zone in and focus on stuff. Unless you're genuine, well, you're proper yeah, interest. unless you're into the business side of it as yeah, well. Like, yeah. it's a mm. whole other arena. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I'm actually into business as well, but it's just the whole filling out the applicant applications processes, mm. it is rather intimidating. Cause, and then you're like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on the line here, so I have to make sure it's right. And then you probably just fumble it because you're trying to make sure it's mm-hmm. right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? I think so. That was it. Yeah. Carl, thanks so much for being here. <laughs> well done. Well done. Uh, yeah, thanks so much to everyone for listening. And a special thanks to everyone who made this happen today. So thank you, Carl. Thank you, Darren, uh, our producer. Um, so you can find us at Herman's Auctioneers on Instagram and uh, Herman.ie where can we find you Carl? Um, or just on Instagram just my, my name at <laughs> Carl.hickey underscore nice uh, I'll be in the middle of making a website so hopefully that's open yeah, yeah so cheers thanks so much no about it
Our forthcoming exhibition, Jorad, is set to run from October 13th to 16th at Studio 10 Wicklow Street. And all of the works included in the exhibition will be available to bid online at herman.ie. Uh, the exhibition features works from artists like Jack Yates and Louis Labrocchi, as well as contemporary artists, and explores the exported influence of external elements on Irish art from the 20th century onwards.